Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of Terrace Talk. It is a, I think we can call this a, a championship uh, top of the table clash, even though we're 10 games in. Norwich City hosts Swansea City at Carrow Road on Saturday. And before we get going and I introduce you to my, my two guests, like, we have to apologise for the fact that we didn't bring you one of these ahead of the Millwall game. I, I had a few days off. Um, the championship schedule is quite relentless. We tried to rotate the squad a little bit. It didn't quite go out in, in the way we planned, but um, it's all good. We're back for this weekend and I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Pink and Colin. Norwich fan Terry Westgate and also um, part of the Jack Cast Swansea City podcast it's Gitto Llewellyn who uh, we've just been talking about your your surname and how it uh, matches with, with a former player of the two sides which is which is always helpful. Yeah Chris Llewellyn who uh, I th- well has links to both clubs having been the academy manager with us as well very recently so um, yeah it, uh, it helps definitely. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Um, Terry, let's let's come to you first and foremost. Um, how are you doing? It's, it's good to see you again virtually, as, as of course we have to do things at, at the moment. Um, how are you feeling as, as a starting point about Norwich City's opening 10 games and, uh, and where they're at so far this season? Well, it's like it's suddenly all coming together. I mean, we had a bit of a, a rocky start, um, which given all everything that was going on with players coming and going and talk about players coming and going, um, it's kind of understandable. But we always say, don't we, you have to wait until you've played 10 games before you can look at the table. And 10 games in, suddenly we're back up at third. We're starting to pull together some good results. We're is it five games unbeaten now. Um, and it's starting to look good, even though we've still, as always, we've got a few injuries on some key players. So we're not even at full strength. But I think, um, although the Millwall game was frustrating, we had so much possession and we had the chances. And again, we didn't lose, which I think is really important. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll come to that middle game in in a second. I just want to touch upon what you said there in terms of, and and I'll ask Gitto his his thoughts on this as well, in terms of 10 games being played, that's when cliches and and people say, oh, you can start to see the table begin to take shape a little bit. The fact that perhaps we're we're still talking about performances, maybe not consistently being where they need to be for Norwich City, it's probably a massive positive that they sit third in the table at this early stage. Yeah, Definitely. I think so. I think, um, I mean, if you look at obviously two years ago when we won the title, that first, those first 10 games, again, it was very up and down and it took a little while for us to get going. And you almost don't want to be too good at the start because you kind of want to build over the season. So I think, you know, t- 10 games is a good, a good place to go. But obviously what happens now is whether we can keep that momentum going. And it almost feels like we could we can get better, like we, there's more goals in that team then we're actually scoring at the moment and, you know, defence is starting to look quite solid. So I think there's a good chance that we can we can go on for the rest of the season. But again, it is just 10 games. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Tomorrow is is somewhat of a litmus test, I think, for, for both sides. Um, Gitto, let's let's bring you in. Talk to talk to me about Swansea City stuff. Again, they come to Carrow Road, five unbeaten. They're looking fairly good under Steve Cooper. Only one defeat so far this season. Um, talk me through the start of, of your guys' season. Yeah, a, a bit like Norwich, really. I think it was a bit of a slow start to the season. We just kind of wanted to establish ourselves, um, try to keep things tight. Games weren't very entertaining, I'll be honest. Um, but but we were getting, you know, respectable results. Um, but over the last few games, it really feels like the performance levels have kicked up a notch. Um, we're playing some of the best football we've played under Cooper. Um, we're looking much sharper. Our passing is more intricate. We're creating better chances. Um, and and we, we've had some decent results. You know, we, we comfortably beat Stoke. Um, the 2-0 result quite 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 honestly flattered Stoke. Um, we, we got past Blackburn 2-0, which was um, a tough game, which could have gone either way. And then in midweek, we, we drew against Brentford away, 1-1. Um, they scored with their only shot on target. They, they really struggled to create anything against us. And um, we, on the other hand, played the better football against... Uh, what I think a lot of people expect to be one of the best teams in the division this season. So th- there's a real buzz around the club at the moment. I think there are um, there have always been question marks about Steve Cooper among fans because his style hasn't been that um, adventurous, um, hasn't been that positive uh, at all times. Um, he's been a bit too conservative every now and again, but definitely in the last few games, we, it's as if we've seen the plan sort of come to fruition. We can see the way now that he wants us to play and, and, and we're, we're liking it. 
Yeah, I, I remember last time Norwich were, were in the Championship, obviously you guys had, had Graham Potter. It kind of felt like you were in a little bit of a transition. Obviously, suddenly Potter leaves to Brighton, Cooper comes in. You're, you're in what year two of, of having him at the club now. Does this feel like a, a season? I know you obviously finished in, in the playoffs last season and, and lost in the semi-finals to Brentford over two legs. But is this the season where Swansea fans are, are hoping that you can push on and, and perhaps those building blocks that have been put in place can actually mount to maybe a, a, a credible push for promotion? We're hoping. I mean, we, when we were first relegated from the Premier League, I think everybody just wanted to kind of stabilise things. We'd had a, a difficult couple of years in the Premier League where we'd avoided relegation by the skin of our teeth a couple of years and then finally went down in, in pretty miserable circumstances. Um, we had to sell, you know, most of our more experienced players. We were starting from scratch, um, had some financial problems as well. Potter did a fantastic job of just bringing in the kids and turning us into... Uh, a really competent championship side that season. Um, uh, and Cooper's kind of just helped mature that that group of youngsters, really, and and added his own, um, own stamp on the team, made us tougher to beat, definitely. And towards the end of last season, we definitely saw that kind of progress showing. We, we made a fantastically charge for the playoffs, uh, a bit of a miracle that we got there, if I'm being honest. Uh, we were just happy to be there and not too concerned about going up. But after the start we've had to this season and the, the greater squad depth that we've got this season, um, I, I, everybody's a year older, a year wiser. People are asking, well, could this be the season that we can we can make a push either automatically or, or probably more realistically through the playoffs? Mm, that's, that's interesting. From, from what Gitto said there, Terry, I, I see a few parallels between maybe what Steve Cooper has done at Swansea and what Daniel Farker did at Norwich City in his opening two years at the club. Yeah, it's very, very, and even when you were talking about the games you've played this season, it sounds very similar, like the draw with Brentford, and we've had very similar experiences recently, it sounds like. And I do remember when Swansea came to Carrow Road the year we went up two years ago, I remember thinking that there was there was real potential in that side. It felt mm. like it was a team that wasn't quite there yet, but was on the way to getting there. And I remember at the time, lots of people making the comparison to, oh, this is what Norwich were like last year or the year before. So it does feel like that Swansea are going on a very similar journey to Norwich, yeah. I, I agree. I, a lot of comparisons have been made between the two sides. I mean, Norwich had a lot of players from the academy um, coming into that side to bolster it as well, um, playing a very entertaining style of football, which which was, start, which was definitely the case for us under Potter. We're seeing it now under Cooper as well. Um, and yeah, I, th I think that there are definite, definite obvious comparisons to be made between what Faka did at, at Norwich, which everybody admired so much, and, and what we're hoping Swansea can do now under Cooper. Mm, the, the comparisons are really interesting because, and, and, and Gita, I don't know if you, if you know this, but Norwich's sporting director, Stuart Weber, actually um, worked with Steve Cooper, I think, at, at, at Wrexham and then maybe at Liverpool as well. So there's certainly some, some sort of. Um, connections between the, the two clubs, which is which is really interesting. Um, Terry, talk to me a little bit about this draw against Millwall. I'll confess I haven't seen the full game, but I've certainly watched highlights. I had a few days off, so, so I wasn't at the game. Um, it seemed quite a frustrating evening for Norwich and, and probably one of those games that when you're a side expected to dominate the ball, you do come up against a team who maybe do look to defend resolutely and, and ever so often you will get one of these results where it's a bit of a drab nil-nil. Yeah, it very much was that. I think they definitely came to try and defend, to try and stop us playing, which unfortunately you're going to get a few times in the Championship. If they know they're not going to be able to compete with you playing football, then they'll just try and stop playing football. We still had lots of chances. You know, keepers still had to make a save. So it was entertaining up to a certain point, but we just couldn't finish it off. But, I mean, I was just grateful that it did actually end up nil-nil because we've had games like that and then right at the death, We've conceded like a dodgy goal or an own goal or penalty. Even we've done that, haven't we? So the fact that we still came away, you know, with the draw, another game unbeaten, I think is good. We've still got that momentum going. Like you said at the start of the show, at the moment the championship is relentless. Two games a week, week after week after week. You hardly got any time to recover from one game and the next one comes along. So I think if you can go through a game without making any mistakes, without, you know, without losing... And then, like you say, a few days later, you've got another game and another chance to go again. Mm, yeah, momentum's key in this division, isn't it? And it, it does finally feel like Norwich maybe are turning the tide a little bit in terms of that mentality that obviously saw them relegated from the Premier League in pretty disappointing fashion into maybe one that is a bit more of a winning mentality, if, if that's if that's fair to say. That momentum will be key to that, won't it, in terms of growing confidence gradually? 
Yeah, definitely. And I think, like you say, you need it in the championship because it, like, it can go both ways. You can have momentum that's going the other way where you're losing week after week and it's difficult to break out of that. But when you've got two games a week, you need to just come to steadily build. And we're, we're doing that. We didn't have a great start to the season, but we're now starting to get those results. They're Pukki's getting the goals again. We're getting a bit of stability in the team rather than having to keep changing each week through for injuries. And you can see it slowly build up. And that's how you get promoted from the championship. I mean, what, one thing that we know as Norwich fans is we know all about promotion and relegation because it happens to us so regularly. And you do know that when you have a good promotion season, it's when you just gradually build it up and you build the team and you build momentum. And at this point of the season is when you're getting to that create some stability within the side and then if you just keep like just not getting not losing just keep getting those draws those wins and you just build it up and then hopefully by the turn of the year you can actually start to start winning games really quite convincingly yeah and, and you talk about momentum Gitto your, your your side arrive at Carrow Road five unbeaten obviously off the back of a draw against Brentford how, how have your fans sort of viewed this week against obviously Brentford who are who are sort of tipped by by pundits, supporters uh, alike, really, to, to be sort of challenging at the top end of the division. And then obviously Norwich City have just come down from the Premier League. In terms of how you view these two games, obviously probably quite a good test for where you guys are in the division at the moment. Yeah, definitely. At the start of the week, we were saying, OK, this will give us an idea of, of where we stand this season. And uh, I think we passed the test against Brentford. We were, we were the better side, I thought, uh, in that match, played the better football. And that's... Not something that usually happens when a team goes to goes away to Brentford, and now we're going to Norwich, who you know are just point behind us. You seem to be really hitting form at the right time. I, I watched the highlights of the Millwall game, and it just looked like one of those games where you're battering on the door non-stop for ninety minutes, and it it just doesn't go your way. Um, so it's you know it, we're we're very aware that we're playing against one of the best teams with one of the best squads in the division um, on Saturday, um, and but but we put ourselves in a position where. It's a bit of a free hit. If if we go away to Carroll Road and, and get a win, uh, amazing, fantastic. You know, it's it's brilliant. We could go top um, uh, after that match. But if we go there and lose, well, we've got one of the toughest away games in um, uh, in, in the calendar out of the way, and we we move on and and try to sustain the momentum that we've built beforehand. Um, Carroll Road isn't usually a happy hunting ground for us. Um, we've only won there once in the last 70 years. So um, if, if we can get anything out of that match, um, it, it'll be pretty a pretty good result, I think. Goodness, I, I didn't realise uh, I didn't yeah. realise Swansea's um, form at Carrow Road was was quite that bad. Um, Terry, I'll, I'll just bring you in. That that sort of has set it up for a lover a long come Norwich moment, hasn't it? Surely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has. I didn't realize. I never, I never expect us to be somebody else's bogey team. It's always the other way around. Um, and it, I, I must say, the more we talk about this game, the more I am gutted that we as fans aren't going to be there because this is one of those top of the table clashes with a full house would have been an absolutely cracking atmosphere. And maybe because the fact the fans aren't there, maybe Swansea will get away with something this time. I don't know. Maybe it is a long come Norwich. Yeah, who, who knows? Um, Gitto, you, you spoke about how Millwall approached it and, and they were quite sort of back back to the wall at, at Carroll Road in, in midweek. How do you think Steve Cooper will? You've sort of alluded that he, he makes his teams very hard to beat. Are you, are you expecting a Swansea team that maybe concedes possession to Norwich and, and maybe looks to hit them on the break? Or do you think it will be um, a Swansea team that does look to impose themselves on the game in, in terms of perhaps their style of play more than anything else? I'd imagine we'll we'll treat it the same way we, as we we treated the Brentford match, where we'll we'll try keep things tight at the back. We, we play with a back five, um, but but with wing backs who absolutely bomb on, and um, they've they've been our main source of of creativity this season. Actually, um, they they've provided the vast majority of our assists this season. Um, so I, I it's going to be a case of playing on the break. I would imagine um, if Norwich concede possession then we've got players who can shift it into dangerous positions very quickly uh there's all there are always players waiting to make a run with quite an energetic side um so it's I, i'd imagine that's how uh, it'll go i, I don't think pos possession will be massively imbalanced we've um we do probably get use less of the ball these days than than, than we've traditionally done in the past it's usually it's a sort of high 40s maybe creeping into the low 50s these days whereas in the past, Swansea teams have been known for hogging the ball and and really building their game around possession. Um, I think our, our our well, where we really caught Brentford out more often than not was was by shifting the ball quickly and and trying to get it up the pitch 
uh, on the floor, but getting it up to Andre Ayew and, and Jamal Lowe and our, our wing-backs very quickly. And I'd imagine that's how we'll play against Norwich as well. Mm. Andre Ayew is someone I, I want to ask you about. I've, I've read some Steve Cooper quotes this morning and he's sort of said that he's he's Swansea's main man. How, how pivotal is he to the way that both you guys play and also in terms of productivity, in terms of goals and, and assists and, and, and goal contributions generally? He is key. I mean, it, it goes without saying the player of his experience should be in this division, really. And, and he's he's still earning a hefty wage as well to, um, to to be doing that. He's the one kind of big earner from the Premier League that we've not been able to shift. But we've we've really made good use of him. He's he's uh, he came back into the side at the start of last season and suddenly you know had a, had a huge impact. And he's. He's a strange player, Andre Ayew, because you never know what he's going to do on the ball. He's um, he, he is a bit of an individual. He is um, he'll, he'll do things, and you're thinking no other player in the championship would do that. And sometimes it works out fantastically. Sometimes he, he catches the opposition out and scores a goal. Sometimes he, he tries some pass which nobody in the team is expecting, and they're just not on the same wavelength at all. And it goes out of play for a for a throw in, and you can see his frustration. Um, but but in general, I mean, he he. he contributes a massive amount to this team not just in terms of goals um he's scoring one every two games this season which is a, a decent contribution for somebody who's not really an out and out striker in the traditional sense um but he's also integral to our build up he'll come back and win headers at um, uh, at set pieces in our own box um he's a real battler um he does not give the center backs a, a moment's rest um He's he's probably the hardest worker in the entire side, and he can and for a player of his experience, who's played in World Cups, who's played in the Champions League, who's you know played in top divisions throughout his career, for him then to show that he is the one that's trying hardest, for the for him to be pushing the pace, it, it's it's brilliant. It's the example to set for the rest of the team, and that's why he is so key to the team. And um, it's he's in the final years of his contract now, so. This will probably probably be his final year at Swansea, and um, we just hope that he his quality it, um, can can help get us out of this division. Yeah, and he and he certainly has plenty of of quality. Um, Gitto, you, you spoke about his unpredictability there. Terrier, uh, we'll go to Norwich's sort of unpredictable man, Emmy Buendia. We haven't really had a, an opportunity to speak about that Bristol City game and that piece of skill. I, I'm sure you're aware of the one I'm talking about, but. I read a stat earlier this week that said he, he creates chances more frequently than any uh, than anyone else in, in the championship. Are we really beginning to see the best of Emmy Buendia at Norwich City again? I hope so. Yeah, I really hope so. It sounds like, well, it looks like and it feels like that he's back to his best, back to he will, how, you know how he was playing a couple of years ago. That little bit of skill to bring the ball down. I mean, I must have seen it replayed about 100 times and it just looks beautiful every time I see it. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, you know, him and Pookie sort of playing together up front. Everybody just seems to be slowly hitting form again. And we're very lucky to have Emmy. And I think a lot of people thought that we wouldn't have been able to hold on to him in the transfer um, window over the summer. So the fact that he's still there and he's still creating those chances. I mean, his stats over the last couple of years have been ridiculous. The amount of you know chances that he's created for the team. I mean, you just, you know, how would we cope without him? Well, let's hope we don't have to find out anytime soon. Mm, one one area that, that there is criticism about Emi Buendia is perhaps his his goal return. And uh, he had a good chance against Millwall to, uh, to perhaps open the, the scoring. Of course, scored at Bristol City and, and opened his account for the season, which is which is great. Is that something you would like to see him add a bit more of? I think if, if memory serves, um, this fixture a couple of years ago, he actually scored the, the winning goal. I think in, in the one they win that you sort of spoke about earlier on. So would you like to see Buendia add a, add a few more goals to his game? Or, or do you think that's maybe a bit of an unfair criticism? I think it's a little bit unfair. I think he's a forward player and therefore as a forward player, you expect them to get a certain amount of goals. But I think the point is that he's created goals for other people. So I think as long as somebody's scoring and he's creating the chances, then I'm not going to criticise him too much. But obviously, you want more goals. Of course you do. Everybody wants to see more goals. So, yeah, of course, I'd like more goals, but I'm not too harshly critical about them. Yeah, I, I, I've often said that if you combined Todd Campwell's goal return with Emmy Buendia's creative stats last season into one player, you've got yourself a, a £40 million player, haven't you? It's a shame they kind of perhaps missed a, a little bit of each other's quality a little bit. Um, Gitto, let's let's talk about this weekend then. In terms of Swansea, um, how do you expect them to, to approach this game? You said maybe that, that they'll probably work from the back forwards, but is it a game that as a supporter, you you look at and are a bit concerned about? Or, or I mean, you said it was a bit of a free pass earlier on. Do you view it as 
sort of nothing to lose in, in that regard. Yeah, I think so. I think it's too early in the season really to be saying, oh, this is, you know, a promotion six pointer or something like that. You know, we we still don't know how, how both side seasons are gonna go. Uh, at this stage you're just looking to get the points whichever way you can. And against a team like Norwich, I think you know, you, you have to accept that um, you, you're probably going to be favourites. Um, and we're, you know, if we can get a point out of this game, it will probably be a good result. But um, whereas previously under Steve Cooper, I think we would have just gone into a game like this and looked to park the bus. These days we're, we're far more potent when we do get the ball and we are, we're more likely to cause problems um, for the opposition. Um, I, I can you know, when when we talk about players like Pukki and Buendia, et cetera, we're in for a tough game defensively. It's probably going to be the toughest test that our defence has, has had this season. Um, although they've done fantastically so far. We've got a player called Mark Gay who's on loan from Chelsea. And I, I'm convinced he must be the best centre-back in the division because he, he is... He just looks at a different level to anybody else that, that you see around the place. And we're just extremely lucky to have him um, from Chelsea. And he's he, he's like having two defenders on the pitch. So that, that should really help um, when you're playing against like a team like Norwich, who do like to move the ball. The movement is is constant and, and you've always got players making runs uh, in every direction. Um, so to have a player like Gay who's... Got the physicality, but also got the uh, got got the eyes in the back of his head to deal with stuff like that. Should be should be key, and he has to have um, another of his great games tomorrow to keep the likes of Puki and, and Brendia um, quiet. You'd imagine. Mm, uh, you've, you've mentioned one defender there. I'll, I'll ask you another. Who Norwich fans will will obviously be familiar with um, Ryan Bennett. How how he how has he got on so far at, at Swansea? Is he? beginning to find his feet in the championship because we saw him have a, a very good season a couple of years ago with Wolves when they when they won the title. You've obviously got Corey Smith and uh, and Carl Norton as well, both of whom Norwich fans will be familiar with. Yeah, we do have quite a few former Norwich players now that, now that you mention it. Um, Ryan Bennett's only just signed for us on deadline day. He's coming to replace Joe Rodan, who um, signed for Spurs. So huge shoes to fill there, um, you know, replacing one of one of the best centre-backs in the division who's who's gone to Spurs there. But um He's he's fitted in brilliantly. I mean, he's just a solid presence at the back. Um, he's just do it, doing the business, really. He's, he's not made any mistakes. He seems to fit in very well um, alongside our other defenders. He's constantly... The back three is seems to always be made up of Gay, um, uh, Bennett, and then either Norton, who's um, playing predominantly as a centre-back these days, or Ben Cabango, who is uh, an academy product, 20 years old, um, but looks much older in the way that he plays. Um, but Bennett is is playing at the heart of the defence then and keeping everything solid. And um, But yeah, actually all three former Norwich players have, have had good starts of the season. Norton gives us that kind of footballing ability from centre-back. Um, uh, and, and uh, well, Smith's settled in nicely since he arrived from Bristol City as well. He he gives us that little bit of bite in midfield that we've been, um, that we've been missing. So yeah, they, they've all really contributed something. Hmm. Good to good to hear, um, Terry. Let's let's get your thoughts on on tomorrow's game. Then, how do you see this going for for Norwich? From what Gitto has said over the last sort of twenty minutes or so, I'm anticipating quite a a tough afternoon, particularly maybe for the creative players. I think it's going to be a tough afternoon, but I think it's going to be a great game. I think if both Swansea and Norwich play at their, their best of their ability, it should be a cracking match, shouldn't it? Because there's a lot of talented footballers who are going to be on the pitch there, and the two teams that are in form as well. I don't think there's going to be a lot in it. I think there's probably just going to be the odd goal between us, or maybe it will be a draw, because it sounds like we're quite evenly matched at the moment. So, I'm yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to it. It's been a while with behind closed doors football that I really look forward to a match. I've not really enjoyed the experience watching at home. But this sounds like it's going to be a cracker, doesn't it? Yeah, it absolutely does. And if you're Daniel Farker, given, as, as we've said, the schedule's been pretty relentless... Are you looking to make changes this weekend or, or given we've got an international break coming up, are you maybe looking to to not necessarily rotate as much given that they're probably going to have, well, for some of them who aren't going off on international duty, two weeks to to, prob- to properly sort of recover before, again, another relentless period of fixtures in the division? Yeah, I always I always say, well, you should never change a winning team. But obviously, 
obviously we didn't win against Millwall, but we still played really well. I mean, kind of like if you want to keep the momentum going, you don't really want to make any changes unless you have to. So I would probably keep the same lineup unless there's any knocks or anything else going on. Keep the team as it is. And we've got the thing is we've always got really good options on the bench at the moment. So there's people that can come in if things aren't quite working. You know, we've always got Mario who can come on at the end and, and get the winning goal if we need him to. So I'm I'm quite happy for Farkas to stick with what's working at the moment because uh, there's not much wrong in the team. Mm. Gitto, finally for, for you, how do you see this this game going from, from a Swansea perspective? How do you see the afternoon going? I think it's going to be a great contest. I really do. I think it's going to be a fantastic match, really entertaining. Um, both teams going for the win. Um, uh, and yeah, it should be fantastic for for, for all of us watching. Um, I'd like to think as well that the Swans can can get something out of the game. Um, so I'm if I was to um, predict, I, I'd go for another one-all draw, which would mean two points from two away games against Brentford and Norwich. And I, I'd have happily taken that at the at the start of the week. Yeah, and, and continues the momentum, doesn't it? Terry, are, are you in the same sort of um, mode as, as, as Gitto? Would, would you take a point? And of course, I'm, I've got to ask you for that that dreaded score prediction, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think, um, I'd, obviously, I'd rather have a, I'd be, a, a point against Swansea would be a good result. But um, see, I've rolled with my heart. I still think we're going to win 2-1. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear it. We love we love a bit of optimism. You see, Norwich fans haven't been too optimistic on these this season, so uh, so it's 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 good to have your optimism, Terry. Um, Terry Gitto, thank you very much for joining me. We'll we'll leave all the links to to these guys um, in the description below, and whatever you're watching this on, um, whether you're listening to this as a podcast or watching this on YouTube. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're all staying safe. Of course, we'll be at Carrow Road tomorrow, bringing you all the analysis, reaction, opinion from Norwich City's game with Swansea. You can head over to pinkin.com for all the latest news and views. And we will see you again very, very soon.